Hi, I'm Alex Porbe, uh, CEO and President of Synovus Energy. What are Canada's strengths and weaknesses when it comes to attracting foreign direct investment in the energy sector? And what would you say are our main competitive advantages in Canada? I honestly believe we, we have quite a, a number of very significant advantages. And, you know, I think the first one you have to look at it is the quality of, of uh, the resource uh, itself. And if, if you think about it, we have the third largest reserves of oil on the planet and the fifth largest reserves of natural gas. We have uh, much as I, I think it often surprises uh, people who, who do not uh, really have a lot of depth in this area. We have one of the top environmental, social and governance scores of any country producing oil and gas in the world. And frankly, one of the most stringent regulatory and environmental frameworks in the world. And on top of that, we, we have as a country put a uh, national price on carbon. And I think on, on top of that, uh, I, I really think Canada has been and will continue to be one of the best places in the world to continue to invest in energy. Um, you know, you look, you look at, at most of the places in the world where oil and gas are found, um, we, uh, Canada really distinguishes itself in many ways. We have a very stable democratic government with strong economic policies, the rule of law, uh, respect for human rights. So I, I think you can, you can really understand uh, all of, of, of the positives. And, you know, I, I, I along with the, the positives probably come a, a couple of challenges, um, you know, and I think particularly if you're an international investor and you're looking at taking your money to Canada, um, you know, there, there are some things you, you want to think about. One thing I would say, investors crave uh, certainty and stability. Um, I do think we have a bit of room for improvement over the last few years as I think most people watching this this interview will will know. Uh, we have had some regulatory challenges and particularly with respect to our energy sector. And this regulatory uncertainty has resulted in delayed investment decisions on large investment projects and particularly pipelines. So what makes Calgary an attractive place to do business and today in particular? And what would you uh, characterize the ease and also the cost of doing business uh, like? Coming from Calgary's arch rival Edmonton, I, I'm probably kind of a unique guy to give you a, a view on this, but you know, I, my experience, I, I've been in Calgary uh, almost my entire professional career, and I, I think Calgary has some, some really uh, extraordinary features that, that make it a great place to do business. And, you know, I think, number one, um, we, because of the long-term focus of the energy industry in Calgary, um, it, we have an incredibly entrepreneurial uh, city. Uh, we have the highest density of head offices per capita in Canada. And, and uh, on top of that, we have the highest concentration of high tech workers in all Canadian cities. So you have that combination of that real entrepreneurial drive with a lot of that skill set. Um, a lot of the a lot of the Canada's finance is driven out of uh, out of out of Calgary. And so you have this massive in industry, the energy industry, that is really I think help to drive uh, 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 the growth and of, of all those resources, and I think you, it's almost unheard of to have that kind of resource and uh, business resources in in a in a city the the size of uh, of Calgary. Just I'll give you just a couple of other things. You know, one of the I think we're the youngest population of any major city in Canada, and then you know the other thing that I would say about Calgary and and Florent, you know you know this having lived here. Uh, uh, incredible uh, recreational resources just outside your door. We we have the mountains, we have the foothills, and for especially for young people who are looking uh, to come to a, a place where there is great, well-paying jobs, great work, but also this incredible recreation opportunity. And you know, it, it makes Calgary really, really unique in that aspect. For a city, I think of 1.3 million, uh, the the downtown core is just really extraordinary. Talk us a little bit through Calgary's innovation ecosystem, energy and non-energy, uh, and the availability of, of top talent and skills, because that's ultimately what drives innovation. 
I mentioned earlier the incredible entrepreneurial spirit uh, that that exists in Calgary. Um, but it, but it's not just an entrepreneurial spirit. It, it's incredible technical capability. And, you know, one of the I think something that would really surprise a, a lot of the viewers is that Calgary has the highest number of patents per capita in Canada. And we file patent applications at triple the rate of, of the rest of the country. So, I mean, and, and this is a lot of this is the innovation around the production and the distribution of, of energy. And on top of that, you know, I, I won't go into the details, but we have many, many organizations that have been funded, you know, both by government, but also by industry, all focused on innovation, uh, research and development. Um, you know, there, there is a, a, one of the industry associations that, that were involved in COSIA actually uh, has funded a $20 million uh, Carbon X Prize, and and the view of that is to develop technologies to turn CO two into usable products. Uh, we're a sponsor of that uh, of that prize, and these are the kind of things that are going on in in Calgary. Uh, that I and I just really I think most Canadians do not appreciate the the incredible importance and profile of the high tech industry in the city. How much of that innovation of that entrepreneurial spirit? Um, uh, let's say goes beyond the energy sector, how much ultimately creates opportunities uh, and also perhaps how much financing uh, trickles, let's say, out of the oil patch into other uh, ventures outside of the energy sector in Calgary? It's a really good question. And if you go around downtown Calgary today, I mean, you obviously see the energy companies, the the big, the Suncors, the CNRLs and the, the Synovuses. But I think what I find one of the most interesting things is you're seeing lots of things like financial uh, uh, advisory uh, companies, uh, lots of high tech around the finance industry, um, around uh, logistics. And a lot of these did have their, they initially had their, their, their uh, source, I guess you would say, in the energy industry, but, but have moved far beyond that. So you're seeing some of the most innovative companies in Canada around logistics, around supply chain, um, finance, uh, benefits is a great example. We have this, we have this in, incredible concentration of head offices, and they all need benefits, services, uh, that, that sort of thing. And you're seeing those companies that kind of had their genesis serving the oil and gas industry now moving out and being successful throughout Canada. The buzzword around, let's say, energy and resources in Canada is clean tech. Does that mean that clean tech is essentially the future of Canada's energy sector? And would Calgary be the, the capital in, in Canada for that? Yeah, I, I think certainly. Um, you, you know, it's very interesting. Even if you look at, at renewable energy, uh, Calgary, because it, 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 I think because it started out as the fossil fuel or the oil and gas energy center, it is also the renewable energy center of, of Canada that over the next decade or two decades, uh, you're going to see massive advancements in our in in our carbon tech in our technologies around removing carbon uh, from from fossil fuels or storing carbon, carbon capture and sequestration is an obvious opportunity. But I know my company uh, the the lion's share of our R and D focus is all around carbon right now. So I, I I think there's a very very bright future in Calgary for those kind of technologies. As a significant investor in communities, what kind of impacts do large investments or foreign investments have on Canadian communities and on our economy as a whole? I think for the average average Canadian, it, it is not immediately intuitive why it is so important to have that, that investment in the country. And I, I think one of the very first things I would say is that, you know, Canada, I mean, a, a, as much as it has grown, you know, globally, we still have a very relatively very low population density, um, but we have the, these these incredible resources in our country, and and you know far more than we could ever utilize. And and that isn't just oil and gas. That is, uh, you know, agricultural products. That is hydro. Um, you know, you name it. Uh, uh, we we pr we have the capability 
to supply these goods and services to the world well beyond our own need. But in order to do that, we need foreign investment uh, coming into the, the country. And one of the things I, I would say, and I think a lot of Canadians, you know, when, when we talk about things like the deficit, you know, that, that, that deficit that we had to take on as a country to get Canadians through this pandemic, that is money that was borrowed and needs to be paid back. And it was large amounts of it were borrowed outside of this country. So in order to uh, uh, repay that, we actually have to have an economy that is firing on all cylinders and is producing goods and services that are that are in demand and required uh, by people o- outside of, of our country. And, and, you know, you think about um, all that money coming into the country, we have to have exports going out of the country in order that that uh, we have that cash uh, to pay for uh, the things we, we had to do uh, that we funded with this deficit. So it, it's just extraordinarily important for the country that we have a robust export economy. Um, and, and as I said, once again, and it's really focused on the fact that uh, we, we, if, if we limited our industry and our industrial production to the needs of Canadians, we would have a, 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 an economy that was just a fraction of the size it is, and it would not be able to provide the prosperity and, and all of the other things that, that, that come, uh, the benefits that come from being Canadian with a robust uh, economy and participating globally. Which non-energy sectors of the economy do you see offering the best opportunities for investment? In a world that is kind of post-pandemic, I, I, I look at Canada and I think Canada, just because of our incredible resource base, we're always going to have an economy that has at it, its base uh, you know, a, a lot of production and processing of, of natural resources. And there's nothing wrong with that. The, you know, the world needs lumber, the world needs natural gas, the world needs, uh, uh, you know, the various minerals that, that we produce. And, and we should be proud of that. But I, but I, I, I think that you, you look at Canada, you look at the immigrants that we're attracting to our country and they're, you know, the, these are highly educated, innovative, entrepreneurial people. And, and I really see, uh, I think the high tech area in Canada is one, you know, we've had pockets of great success. I, I would really expect that that is going to really grow in importance. And the one that I had uh, alluded to earlier is, is this er- this whole in- area of, of environmental, um, the, you know, technologies and industries evolved around improving our environment. Uh, as, as I said, I see the energy industry and a lot of the other industries that are involved in our industry getting very, very focused on what can, you know, what what can be done and what kind of innovations can really drive that. And, you know, if 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 the world is going to meet the commitments under the Paris Accord, we are going it is not going to be done by doing business as usual. Uh, we are going to have to develop many new and advance existing technologies to get there. And I, I think that that actually is a really exciting area for Canada going forward.